Guys, welcome back to another tier list, and in today's episode, we're going to be going through Grammy-winning songs from a variety of genres and ranking them all on our tier list. And if you guys don't want to miss another upload or another tier list, make sure to hit that notification bell to not miss a single video and smash that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And before we actually dive into this, we actually have a lot of other Grammy content on the way, such as an upcoming YouTube video on our reaction to the Grammy winners for the 2024 award award show and we actually did an audio podcast exclusive episode an episode that you can get anywhere else but on spotify and apple Podcasts, and that was on our favorite grammy winning songs so check out the pinned comment to access that but Ant, let's get into this yes, sir. big episode grammy winning songs these apparently are supposed to be fantastic songs if they won grammy so let's be the judge of that starting off with a lot by 21 savage featuring j cole i'm so happy this song won by the way i mean it was one of the biggest moments of 2018 um it was also a massive w for 21 savage to see him link up with a lyricist like j cole seeing the chemistry especially over that incredible soul sample it was really cool and just seeing that j cole verse in real time that's maybe one of his best ever features yeah it's if unreal. I'm being, listen this is the thing though i don't care about any grammy winning songs you cannot escape the tier lists they will <laughs> judge it properly and for this one i'm going to put it in the amazing category yeah absolutely an amazing song i mean it's funny to me how like 21 savage won a grammy before j cole and yet like j cole is the reason why he probably won the well, it's, grammy it's because, for it well they kind of won the grammy at the same time right? yes they, they have they, they both got nominated absolutely so it kind of fits in that i category. mean j cole has the feature though but yeah absolutely he spazzed out on it so many quotables about six nine about um just his encounter with 21 savage and 21's you know introspection on the song is also fantastic like you mentioned the hybrid between the soul beat and the trap beat amazing song but next up we have family ties by baby keem featuring kendrick lamar a song that we've spoken about probably a million times on this podcast but it is one of those songs that stands out in terms of getting a grammy win just because it's one of the best anthems i feel like that we've gotten in a recent time the right? cardo production is absolutely fantastic especially when it takes a dark turn for the second beat switch um the kendrick flows on his verse once he starts off after baby keem just an incredible performance all around and what's interesting is that you and i have done a lot of comparisons in the past of like a lot versus um family ties i believe for different brackets let's say yeah so i think i'm gonna go amazing again with family ties like i feel like they're on the same level and it would be an injustice to put one higher or lower than the other if i'm being honest with you absolutely i think it's an amazing song and i don't know if i ever heard baby keem just sound so jittery he had so much energy the flows were just explosive great flow switches all throughout and even their back and forth at the end it was just an epic song that deserves the amazing rating for sure but let's move on to god's plan by drake and i remember i think we had done a tiktok where i was sort of revealing some grammy winning tracks and you're like no they shouldn't have won that year I don't think it should have won that year, but I understand why it won that year. I mean, it's a good PR. It was also one of the biggest moments of like music history, low-key, for the 2010s. God's Plan went absolutely ballistic. It did. Um, I don't think it's a mid-song. I think it's a good song at best, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, it's not one of the most introspective Drake songs that you get in his catalog, but then there's a catchiness to it. There's, you know, obviously the catchy Drake hook. And even at that, the production itself, it's a bit more lighthearted, but I've heard a lot more interesting Drake beats, if I'm being completely oh, honest sure. with you. So I think it's good. I don't think it's a mediocre song. Um, I'm happy it won the Grammy, I guess. But for the most part, I don't think it's going in the greats or amazing. If yeah, I, I feel like this is one of the cases where I feel like this is sort of a pattern going through these Grammy winning songs where popularity maybe is valued a bit more in the quality of the song. Well, not but always, though. Not always, not but always, oftentimes. But we have some songs here. Oftentimes. Especially, but, you know, once you start getting into other subcategories, like example, you have Rap Song of the Year or Song of the Year, you know, it's a popularity contest. But once you start getting a bit deeper into, like, let's say the nominations and within the categories itself, you start seeing a lot of different songs pop up. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, but God's plan is going into yeah, good. Good category for that. Nice victory lap for Drake. But next up, we have The Hard Part 5 by Kendrick Lamar. This was a big comeback song. It started off the whole rollout for Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Yeah, I want you sample flip as well. That was really like, that was a moment in time. And if you guys actually just recently watched um, our video on like our favorite songs from every 
every single genre. I Want You by Marvin Gaye is one of my favorite songs of all time, especially for R&B um, and soul as a whole, because it's kind of a blend of two different genres. But I think it's a perfect song. I've said it in the past. I still think it's a perfect rapping performance from Kenji. The creativity through the writing, just the different types of you know perspectives he was able to tap into within the writing of the song was super impressive. Um, the production is perfect. I'm not going anywhere else with this. Yeah, song. this is a, this is a Kendrick's masterpiece, and like alongside a lot of the other heart songs, this is one that really shook a lot of people in the best ways possible. It was emotional. It was um, just really mesmerizing from beginning to end. Iconic music video as well. I, I can't pick out a flaw with this. It's got to go into perfect. It's going into the it's perfect. Got to. But next up, we have Leave the Door Open by Silk Sonic. Um, this was a huge song. Bruno Mars, Anderson Park, and um, it really took you back to the Motown era of soul. Um, just such smooth vocals from both of them. Has this seductive energy that really sort of sucks you into the track and the ambiance of it all. Um, production is incredible as well. Um, I don't know if we're being too generous today, but I want to go amazing. I went with great with this. Want to go with great? I Why? Great with Why this not one. amazing? Um, I feel like there are better songs off of the album. If I'm being honest with you, that was something yeah. that I went back to. That's true. So um, there's that as well. And I don't know when I, because you could go great or amazing with it. Like I wouldn't mind putting it into the amazing category, especially that it was such a massive hit song. The production, you know, the glistening keys. Like it's just, it's a really beautiful song, but. Yeah, I guess we could go amazing. I, I don't really have anything else to say. Actually, I, yeah, let's go amazing. Yeah, let's go this. amazing. Hey, I can't really say anything else about it. I feel it. like the amazing uh, category is going to be fucking filled to the brim but by was, the end I, of this. I'm looking at my scores right now, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure if I have that many more amazings on No, you don't. Wow. I, I have like I have a couple of more, but it's not as flooded okay. as the beginning of this tier list. We'll see what ends up happening. But next up, we have Jail by Kanye West featuring Jay-Z, and there's other Kanye songs that have won Grammys, but I feel like... This is more of an interesting selection just because people are a bit more split up when it comes to their It's a very polarizing the song. song for it the is. catalog, especially when you look at, let's say, a Diamonds from Sierra Leone, for example, um, or even an Otis, you know. There's Jesus so many. Walks. Ma yeah. The, well, I I'm talking about more of their collaborations. Okay, together. I thought you meant Grammy winning songs. Uh, yeah. I think Diamonds won and so did Otis, yeah, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Or, or they're nominated. Those have like the general reception around them where like those are masterpieces. With this one, it was interesting because. People were like, yeah, it's a cool link up. It was fire, you know, especially after, you know, they had sort of a feud in the 2010s. And, you know, you never thought that you were going to get another collaboration yeah. between the two rappers. And you get this and it's like, yeah, it, it, the, the writing's good on it. You know, the production is cool, but it's not more than that, you know. And I'm being honest with you, I think it's a good song. I don't think it's anything more than that. And um, even going back to it, I don't do much of it, to be honest with you. You don't like, really play it much. When I'm in Donda, I'm going to other songs, if I'm being honest. Yeah, so I'm going I mean, with the I, I like the originality aspect. 88 Keys came in with this, like, rock-inspired production, which was new to hear them over, to be honest with you. Um, but like you were saying, I think it is fair to say that Jail is probably their weakest collaboration. I mean, is maybe it? there's a couple off of Watch the Throne that Lift you could throw maybe. I th No, I, I, I definitely think Lift Off is their weakest collaboration. They barely have any runtime on the song. Yeah. Their voice, their verses. But I, I love that lived. Beyonce hook, though. I'm still not a big um, fan of that song, regardless. But, but anyways, yeah, I went Jail. With I, I think a good rating is merit, even though Jay Z's wordplay with the Braille and all that was really incredible and impressive. But ultimately, yeah, I think good rating makes sense. But next up, "Easy on Me" by Adele came out in 2021. I fucking love it. Um, this is a heartfelt piano ballad from her, and her vocals on this song have the power to shatter glass and like fucking move mountains bro like it's really a powerful I'm super vocal happy that this song won and I'm happy with all of the success that Adele was able to see throughout her career because she's definitely someone that deserves her flowers especially as a vocalist um, there's very few vocalists from her time that are able to compete if I'm being honest with you and something like an easy on me if you go through the song itself um, it's a bit more slow tempo it's a piano ballad right but it's her vocals that are taking up everything within that track and that's what I like about Adele's music is that she doesn't necessarily have like these crazy productions all the time and it's not necessarily too complicated it's really like her vocal performances yeah. and her songwriting that gets you captivated within the music and i feel like that's a rarity now in 2024 right so going back to these old adele records i find so much value in it because it's like fuck I, I wish i could have been like my age now listening to these types of tracks and appreciating them more at my age i went through an amazing rating especially this one like just i think it might be 
her most personal and inward looking song as like she's apologizing to her ex-husband and her son for sort of breaking up the family and for the divorce and everything that that caused. And you really feel the pain she's trying to evoke. So we can't go anywhere but amazing. You said you were going to slow down on the amazings, but we can't do it with this one. That's, that's for sure. True. Yeah. Okay. But you um, went amazing with absolutely, it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, would you even consider perfect, let's say, just because of what's the flaw with the song? It is a perfect song. I, I, I'm lucky going to change my rating here. Fuck you want to go I, perfect I, I with easy on me? About, the, the writing is phenomenal. The vocal performance is absolutely perfect. And the piano ballad is so emotional. It's a, it's a perfect song. Yeah, it's very minimalistic and simplistic production-wise. I think that's, that's maybe all why you need, I didn't push it. But yeah, it makes you really hone in on the vocals. So fuck it. We'll go perfect probably, with, yeah, with but, easy okay, on me. We will say this, though. We're putting it over a lot and family ties here. Yeah, but it's the best vocal performance you're going to find on this tier list. Probably. Today. So, all right. Okay, perfect. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's keep going on with this. Next, Next one up. is Racks in the Middle by Nipsey Hussle featuring Roddy Rich. Um, this created the massive waves in the hip-hop community because you saw, you know, two West Coast rappers with so much stature and such a great reputation coming together um, and kind of bridging the gap between the new generation and kind of, I wouldn't say Nipsey Hussle was the older generation, but he came up with, let's say, the Wiz Khalifas and the Mac Yeah, Millers. 2010s are. Yeah, more of that sort of stuff. So, so to see that, like... That gap bridged together is absolutely incredible. Um, I love the production. I love the trap production. And I love how patient Nipsey Hussle is with his flow and how he kind of lets things ride out. What's cool about Nipsey Hussle's flow, too, is that he'll take pauses between his lines so he like you make sure to understand everything that yeah. he's saying. You know, and then after that, Roddy Rich's hook is super infectious as well. I went with a great rating on this. Yeah, I think this is a great song. I mean, I love Roddy Rich's melodic hook with the whole mm hmm, mm -hmm like that the whole. The hums, yes, yeah. yes, yes. All, all, of, uh, all the vocal elements within it are great. And then Nipsey Hussle brings in three verses that are meaningful, that have a lot of purpose. The Hip Boy production slaps. Great rating makes sense. Uh, next up, though, Red Bone by Childish Gambino. I love this song because I remember the first time that I heard it. I didn't even know that it was Childish Gambino, even though I was very familiar with his older catalog. When was so, the last time you went through Awaken My Love as a whole? About a year ago. It's been a minute. Because we did an episode. We did an episode yeah, quite a while ago. It, that was the last time. I did it time. in the holidays, actually. Oh, amazing it is album. It's such, such an amazing listen. Yeah, it I really, really is. Uh, and yeah, he just he transformed his sound with this song and with the album as a whole. Um, the chorus is one of the best of the decade. Um, even lyrically, the idea of sort of staying awake, you know, being hip to the bullshit, sort of, you know, always having... Um, you know, your third eye on, you could say, in the sense of really just being um, ultra aware of your surroundings. I like that. I love the the sentimental funk production that's oozing throughout it. And not only that, but it's so, so versatile as a track, right? I've heard this song being played at parties. I've personally played this on my own personal time. Um, there's deep messaging within it as well. So it's so multidimensional as far as a song goes. And you could kind of play it within any sort of setting that you really choose to you can even play on first dates it's very emotional i, <sighs> I don't know about the first I, date of course you can but who doesn't like red bone it's yeah. such, it's such an easy and accessible track who hasn't heard this song and even at that the vocal like performance too emotional is, for a first date yeah, but that's not, just me. because it's the type of song too though that like well no not really you could kind of like tune out and just kind of get into the jam of the song it's yeah. well you don't really have to get into the lyrics all the time but i, I went with perfect on this yeah I, I think i think it is a flawless it, it, track it's a flawless track it really it is. is all right next up we have best part by daniel caesar featuring her this is probably the slowest song that we have on this list in terms of tempo um this nice a perfect wedding acoustic song. guitar ballad yeah it's a it, perfect it could wedding be, it'd be nice for the wedding yeah i mean it's just a lot of purity about love and those topics. Hers vocals are gentle. Um, they're sweet. I love Daniel the chemistry. Caesar matches yeah, her it's energy perfect. perfectly. Absolutely. There wasn't one vocal performance on this song where I was like, oh, well, maybe you didn't need Daniel Caesar on this. Oh, well, maybe you didn't need her. Like, it's a perfect ballad between them two. And I love the way that you transition from the hook to the verses. Um, I went with either great or amazing. I could go either one with this sort of. Uh, yeah, with this song. I, I, I think great makes sense for this. You think so? I don't know, bro. Uh, I, Yeah, I, you know, we'll go with the great with this one. Yeah, I mean, the song is a very calming presence. I feel like maybe there should have been some kind of buildup or like I should have gone somewhere with a bridge or something. Maybe that's something that was missing within it. But yeah, great or amazing is kind of where I was at too. You want to go great? We'll go great with it. All right, it. next up we have Get Lucky by Daft Punk featuring Pharrell. Mega hit. Um, this has one of my favorite bass lines of all time and also the rhythmic guitar being played by Nal Rogers. So nostalgic, really evokes an old um, mm -hmm. disco funk type of feeling. Um, the Pharrell vocals are relaxing but also ethereal. Um, and also Daft Punk vocally, they never sounded better on the vocoders as they do on this song. Um, this is just an anthem. And what I love about it is that like they made a song 
about you know trying to get late sound so sophisticated and sounds so <laughs> grand which... and so smooth there's like a yeah. smooth cadence to the song itself right it puts you in a trance um it's so sick to be able to escape to this type of production and i'm a big daft punk fan but okay Luke. this is uh, this is a perfect song for yeah, me yeah you man. went perfect in with terms it? of like radio uh, hits this is a perfect house I, funk okay, song no. to me six minutes of pleasure when you listen to this no, one no no i'm no, telling no, you no no i listen the writing's a bit simplistic the writing's a bit simplistic. And yeah, so what? But I'm just saying, like, you have to sort of play the compare and match game with, you know, the hard part. <laughs> We're not part trying five. to get a black thought uh, verse uh, here. The, the, part five, the hard part. Like, come on. Bro, no. it's a dance song. I, I what kind of lyrics do you want to see on this? It's an amazing this. song. It's not This a is a perfect, perfect song. There's no way. Yes, it is. There's Absolutely, no bro. That, I don't think it's a perfect song. It's definitely not on the level of as easy on me. Oh, I think it is, for sure. Musically? Mu- uh, production-wise, absolutely. It's better production-wise than easy on me. Tell me who has a vocal performance like Adele does uneasy on me or even the writing okay, itself you're not the writing an and the vocal, vocal performance the, the, the like writing that. and artist performances as far as easy on me is better than what you find on this the song. production and the impact of get lucky to me and is, the is impact bigger of than easy get on lucky. me wasn't massive no they brought a huge okay song. listen I'm, I'm not gonna argue too long if you want to go amazing i'll budge this time even though to me this is one of my favorite songs on this list the, don't let the bias get there's no bias i explain myself no way production's much better but anyways next up the monster by Eminem featuring Rihanna. This is where I knew we had enough of their collapse. I'm like, all right, let's pump the brakes on the Eminem I liked Rihanna it when collapse. I was a kid, though. You didn't like it when you were a kid? Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so not so a you, kid you anymore, had you like your little critique like Luca had when you were 13? Like, no, I don't like this. No, not for me. No, come on. You liked it. I, 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 I liked the hook. I thought it was catchy. That's about it. No, I like it. I M- love this Eminem's song when I was like a kid. like multi-track sort of like second verse sounds disastrous, bro. Like once he says like Yoda lay he who, I'm like, no. I'm I'm out of here. I'm checked out. So the Yodel I'm punching in. I'm, I'm I'm punching out for the day. I'm so out of here. So you're 13 with your genius headphones on, and you're like, "Well, the mixing and engineering on the second verse wasn't that." Yeah, good. I said that's it for me, dog. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> that was it. I think it's a mid song, though. All yeah, aside, it, it is a mid song. I don't. It really uh, is. I, I don't. I love the music video, though. I don't see what value it added to complement or be addition to their previous hit collab. Love the way you lie. Like, there was nothing really new being brought to the table. Same structure. Um, sure, Eminem is sort of speaking for the well, people, no, hoping that his messages are relating to well, people. Well, no, topically, it's a much different song, and it's also a much different production than Love the Way You Lie. I said song structure-wise. I didn't say lyrically. I Why? said the song structure is the same. Hooks. I mean, you could find that sort of song yeah, structure it, everywhere it, 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 on no, this No, it's, list, it's the know? same Rihanna being slotted in for the hook and giving you like sort of this grand performance. And Eminem... Um, well, what, do you want Eminem on the hook on a Rihanna collaboration? No. I mean, they could have gotten a Rihanna strengths. verse at the end of the day. Uh, listen, I don't doubt it's a mid-song, but I, your Play to their strengths. Why? Rihanna can give good nice verses i never said that well, said i'm just saying so, so w- would you rather have eminem on the hook or rihanna on that hook i would have rather had a rihanna verse to change things up structurally I mean, you get Could've a been lot nice. of rihanna on the monster it's not like you only get a hook and then she fucks off but regardless though it's mid-song. a mid song let's Absolutely. go on to the next one let's do stressed out by 21 pilots um this is a massive song went absolutely crazy where are we going with it lou oh man i mean listen this is sort of like a an interesting rap rock hybrid you could say yeah and from a rapping perspective, um, the delivery sounds a bit forced. It sounds a bit disingenuous to me. Um, it sounds like he's struggling my, to my find rhymes mid verse. Um, there's also a pitch down portion towards the latter end of the song. I'm not a big fan of the production as well. It's kind of it's a, a bit sub dude. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a mediocre. Stress so. out some mid song. <laughs> All right, let's keep going on. Next with this. up, no problem by Chance the Rapper. Um, there's a lot of songs off of you know Coloring Book that I really enjoy, and I will give it this. Production-wise, I love the gospel and soul elements to it. I think that it's a really, really nice instrumental that you would come to expect from a Chance the Rapper track. But everything else um, from that point forward kind of falls flat for me. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the 2 Chains or Lil Wayne feature. I feel like they didn't necessarily add too much to the track as well. I run shit like diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then after that, you have like people sitting on seats and shit like that. You know, So I'm not necessarily a big fan of the writing as well. And I feel like... It's a song that's so in your face, but like once you kind of like strip back the noise and you actually look at like what the song is supposed to be, it's easily one of the like weakest tracks on Coloring Book, if you ask me. So is the production good enough to save it from a bad rating? That's kind of what I'm thinking. You're about. going, but you were going to think about going bad with this. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm between bad and mid. I mean, even Chance the Rapper's like his auto tune's not great. The theme of like him pressing label executives like it just sounded a bit out of character i could have gone good with um, this one i think it's a good song it's not necessarily a bad or mid song no it's gotta go all mid. right fine if you want to go mid we'll go mid it's with gotta it. go mid all right go on to the next next one, up though. we have don't let me down by the chain smokers um 
for some reason, it seems like we kind of placed a bunch of mid all together. <laughs> the way that the cards fell. This is like Walmart music. This is this, really th bad. This is like the definition of Walmart music, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it's just like, because there's other EDM songs on this list that I feel like are going to probably get a better rating from me. Um, yeah. Well, not too much. But, you know, once you start getting into like the whole like, don't let me down, like, cook, it's just like, dude, no way. You know what it is no, for it's me? Not even, it's not even good. In, like, I feel like. Even like a FIFA exec like wouldn't even want to put this on a track. List, Absolutely you know? like, not. This I is mean, not even good enough to make a FIFA. Daya track has a pretty you know solid vocal performance, but it's really the drop that's disastrous. And for a progressive um, EDM track, if the drop ain't good, what do you really have? Like the crescendo breaks into like this trap beat, and you're like, what are we doing? <laughs> no, I no. never heard an EDM uh, song try to force a hit so badly because this came out in 2016 where trap music was blossoming and i feel like they just try to leech onto that sound to have a hit this is a, this to me this is a bad song i'm not gonna lie to it's you it's a bad song it absolutely so first bad rating of the day yep but let's see where this goes all right so the next one that we have is there goes my baby by usher um i fucking love this song bro. this is the song yeah, that I, will I, make usher <laughs> snatch your girl away yeah, from you like that's the kind of track song. that it is but i don't know i'm not going towards the amazing or perfect categories i think it's a great song though it's a cool song you know it's uh, you know some down tempo r&b usher serenading his lady talking about how much he loves her catchy hook it's cool it's cool. Good or great for me. We could go good with this one. I'll actually, I'll bump it down. All right, so we're good. Okay, so now that we're, so now are we, like, I, I budged for you twice with two different ones. Are we okay with the get lucky one? No, I, yeah. I, I'm still salty about that. That, that one's We did, hurt. and by the way, it's amazing. But um, let's keep going on with yeah. this, all right? So Holy Grail by Jay-Z featuring Justin Timberlake. Um, you know, once I ended up getting this album from Jay-Z, like, when, what year did this album come 2013. out? 2013. Magna Carta came out in yeah. 2013? Crazy. I was in Myrtle Beach when I first listened to this album. Funny enough with Chris. Uh, but, you know, all in all, I mean... The Jay Z verses aren't too crazy. There's nothing no. really on this is like song that makes me be like, "Wow, I'm fucking, I'm invested." Um, the Justin Timberlake hook is all right, but even at that, the build up into the song is, I don't know. It's also, a bit the, the pre-chorus, like when when like JT's vocals are overlapping over Jay Z, it does not sound. But you good. get like this simplistic piano key that starts off the song, mm -hmm. and I don't know. You just start off on kind of a sleepy note, if I'm being honest with you. And if you want to go through Magna Carta, I'm not going back to this. You know, no, there's other never. songs like "Fuck Up the World." Um, you know, fuck with me, you know, I got it. There's just so much quality on that album that I go back to, and this is just not one of them. I think it's a mid song. It's a mid song, absolutely. Um, next up, though, we have Royals by Lord, and um, I never understood the hype with this song, to be honest with you. Like, it's a hip hop diss song, if you really think about it. Like, she, what she's dissing is pop music and hip hop music, and um, well, the, how is she dissing hip hop music? Um, because like she's singing about like the materialistic subject matter and how like it's time for a change and how you know music is plastic because of the direction content is going into and so you think yeah but that's not a direct diss towards hip-hop it though. is it, it, it's a diss to like a certain type of hip-hop so like luxury rap that sort of stuff luxury like, rap like what kanye was doing Jay braggadocious was doing rap, rap. What, a, what a lot of rappers do to this day like to me i'm like Listen, first of all, even the, the beat, like the, the continuous finger snaps and the distorted synths, there was nothing that really stood out. There was no the Lord's real... performance is like so subdued. Yeah. It sounds like I'm talking to like a cashier, you know? It doesn't this really... is always such an overrated track. It, it really is. I went mid with it. Yeah, this is a mid song, man. All right, um, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Ain't It Fun by Paramore. I fucking love this song. Yes, only one of the only rock songs that <laughs> we have on this, this list. Song. Going back to it, it feels so nostalgic. It does. My mother loved this song too. Yeah, I'm I mean, a big, who doesn't like this song? Absolutely, one of their most accessible songs. I feel like too. It's so uplifting. Yeah, and it's just you know the idea of sort of you know grow, going from you know being a teenager to being in the real world, being an adult, living out on your own. Um, very anthemic chorus as well. Love the electric guitars. Um, Haley's vocals are beautiful. Um, also to hear like gospel choir vocals on a Paramore really song. Cool. Yeah, it was fun. That right? was refreshing. It was refreshing. It's know? a really it's a like. Considering everything on here is a hit, right? Because everything exploded. It's one of the more original hit it songs is. that we've gotten on this list. I went with great, but I could go amazing if you wanted to. Do I can it. go amazing. I just love the, the the genre bending within it. To be all right, honest. so we do amazing. Let's with do it? amazing with ancient right, fun. Let's keep going. Next up, we have "Bubbling" by Anderson Park, and I can't call this song underrated because it won a Grammy. But I feel like no one really speaks about this track. What do you like the most about it? His rapping performances, the hook. The, the tough demeanor that he brings into the track itself. The, the production, production. The production. Yeah, the, the horn section that starts it off and that really gives you that anthemic feel. I mean, also just the fact that, you know, it's Anderson Park making a song that he doesn't usually make where 
he's at his most egotistical, his most braggadocious, really in your face and brash. Like, it really was a song that I feel like if you're a rap fan that isn't into Anderson, this was this is going to be the one that makes you pay attention to him. Okay, so let me ask you this: Is Bubbling on the same level as a lot? No. And is it on the same level as Family? Okay, it's going in great. It's going into the great. Okay, very easily. perfect. Perfect. Very I easily. thought maybe because the Anderson bias was going to come no through Anderson that, we were, bias. that no. we were going to put it into the amazing. But okay, let's keep going on with this. Getting jiggy with it, um, by Will Smith. This is a massive hit, and uh, this is when Will Smith was dropping platinum songs. You know, so yeah. Shout out to Will Smith. I think I think uh, Nas actually wrote this song, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, yeah, so one of those happy-go-lucky rap songs from Will Smith. Um, it's, it's kind of aged well, too. It's aged well. It hasn't lost its charm to me whatsoever. I mean, the punchlines are kind of basic, and they're not too It's a song impressive. that you play on vacation. Yeah. It gets you in a good mood. It, it, it gets you in a loose anything. mood. Yeah. It's a fun song. I think it's good. I think it's a good song. I don't think I enjoy it to this day. I do. This um, or Miami. Miami for sure. Miami. Miami the, the, is Will Smith's the, like the, mecca. Yeah, that's, that's his magnum one. opus. Yeah, it really it just sounds crazy <laughs> to say. <laughs> Did you ever hear Miami by Will Smith? It's a fucking masterpiece, imagine. <laughs> Put it in all the universities. <laughs> Fuck. All right, let's keep going all on. Right, with next this. up, Clarity by Zed featuring Foxes. I've had the opportunity to actually hear this song live by Really? By Zed. How was yes. that? Uh, incredible. The, yeah. the crowd was so engaged with it. Like compare this, let's say, um, to Don't Let Me Down. You know, nice. It's, it's, it's fucking night and day. I really enjoy this I song. I really do. Lo- I love it. You know, the EDM bass drop is fantastic. Um, I love Fox's vocals all throughout it. Um, the whole thing of being like reliant on a significant other and like just don't let me down and um, kind of being on like that free fall edge of like, you know, fuck, like is there still trust within us and that sort of stuff. I love the writing as well. I think it's a great song if I'm being honest. Yeah, great synth, uh, synth-driven uh, dance song. And I love the fact that they really capitalized on the thrilling moments in the sense of making the chorus come in four times and um, making the the sort of drop and the climax and of the song actually live played on. all four uh, all four uh Hooks. Nice. If I could say that. Nice. Yeah, they were hooks on it. So yeah, I yeah. think I think it's a great song. I think what about it is you? a great song. Absolutely. Yeah. But let's keep going on with this. Feel good ink by Gorillas featuring <laughs> Della Soul. All right, man. So I already off of your first initial reaction. I know it's gonna go high. Yeah. It's gonna go really. Everybody high. adores this song, and I think it's uh it's for good reason. You know, I think that lyrically there's so much to grasp onto here in terms of it being a song about um you know wanting to escape an environment that might seem perfect to certain people that are maybe, you know, brainwa- brainwashed or oblivious um, to their environment, but it's sort of like seeing behind the curtain and seeing what's really going on in a society. So um, the message is really powerful for me. I love Trugoy, the Dove's performance on here, and just Gorillas in general, the fact that they've always been able to um, get these unlikely collaborators and make these songs sound so incredible. When did you ever um, think Della Soul and Gorillas were going to be um, a perfect match? For a song. I never guessed it. That's why. Okay, but let me ask you the question. All right, Amazing or Perfect? Um, Perfect for me, man. Yeah, I think it's a perfect song. I I really think so. It's one of my favorite songs on this entire list, if I'm being honest. So unique. It's so fucking sick. Let's keep going on with this. This is a song that, man, I've heard way too much at this point and I'm not a fan of, and that is Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. Um, I kind of feel like people see like Imagine Dragons as like the modern day Nickelback, you know, that rock band that kind of like played on the edge of pop, even though I fuck with Nickelback. I don't want to diss them, Canadian legends, but you know, people sort of have like their, oh, well, they did this and they went mainstream and this was like a massive fucking hit for them. And the whole like radioactive, you know, hook just doesn't sound good in 2024. I think it's a mediocre song. I saw a funny uh, comment online that uh, like uh, a critic had described it, uh, if I'm, I want to sort of say it properly, but I think he had said that it sounded like Chris Martin was delivering like a ballad that was made for Eminem to perform. Like the, the, that was sort of like the comparison that was made. Wait, so once you hear that description, you're like, this is so fucking accurate. Um, oh, shit. It sounds like something that could have made like the Venom track list. You know? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's the way that I put it as well. I, I, can, I really like, I don't want to say I have a hatred for the song, but it's like, I will leave whatever room it's playing in. You could see right through this song. You could. Uh, like the aggressive vocals and like the overproduced like instrumental. Oh, but- oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much, bro. Yeah, it's you had to tone it down a bit. 
<laughs> it's, um, mid. it's a mid song yeah, for absolutely. sure. Next up, we have Riding by Chameleon Air. Perfect. Came out in 2005. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> um, this was always kind of like a meme song for me growing up because I remember the first time I heard it, it was sort of like this compilation video of a bunch of like grannies and grandpas riding like their mobility scooters <laughs> with this fucking song riding playing. Riding dirty. Catch me riding, riding dirty. dirty. There was also the parody by Al Yankovic. I think it was called White and Nerdy. Um, I had memories of that song, too. That was pretty funny as a parody. Um, but the song itself, it has a deeper meaning than people would actually like know, to believe. it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like about mm-hmm. like racial profiling and abuse of power. Um, but it's packaged into like this fucking banger that you want to ride out to. You know? I think it's a great song, all jokes aside. It is a great song. <laughs> it's a, and shout out to Chameleon Air. Actually, he's doing really great for himself, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, like he does he does well with his investments. Like he, he obviously like he's not as prominent in the hip hop scene now. You could kind of see he fell off, but like But he won in life. Yeah, he won in life. Yeah. Shout out to Chameleon Air. Absolutely. All right. All right next, next up we have We Are Young by Fun featuring Janelle Monet. Travis and, Scott's favorite song. Yeah, he plays at all the after parties, club appearances. Like this is the one that does it for him um it's a it's a a pretty good song it's pretty good good. you're going good good or great i mean i was amazing you were amazing it's it's so anthemic i do like how vivid it is like he puts you in the scene of that bar of course i like that a lot not only that but like talking about recapturing your youth and feeling youthful like a lot of people could you know grab onto a message like that it's an extremely important song for a generation so i went with amazing the impact is absolutely inevitable everyone has fantastic performances on the song itself um and there's a grandiose feel to it it's not like radioactive where like you're fucking listening to the production you're like i could see right through this this has depth it has meaning yeah. it has emotion it's about like seizing like the moment and like it just feels like a big celebration of life but let's go great because i okay. was stuck yeah, with yeah, good no and uh, yeah we'll go great with this one for we are young but next up we have bangarang by skrillex and um this is probably the most popular dubstep song of all time it's just so irritating to me though i'm not huge on the genre itself i don't know if that will when play we were a younger though here. we used to play it i used to play it but like just the distorted wobbly bass um the looped up vocals the glitch sounds it's it's really not that uh, it's, it's just not that like it's... to me like this was my idea of like if I was stuck in an underground parking garage and every single car in there's alarm went off, that's what that's how Bangarang would be created in my head. Would it's be crazy that. where music was at though, almost like you could say close to fifteen years ago at this point. Yeah. It's getting to that point. Uh, but dubstep as a whole is just kind of aged poorly for me. I was a big fan of dubstep when we were kids, right? In elementary school and then going into high school. I play all kinds of Skrillex, but no, this is a bad song. Yeah, I mean, listen, bit- maybe it goes off to this day in the jungle gyms, but not for me. Not in my rotation. Absolutely. I not. would go with uh, with mid at best. I went bad. We can go. Yeah, let's go bad. I, 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 bad I, I was being a bit generous with, I went uh, bad with, with it. the no mid. Way. Let's go bad. All right, next one. Let's go Really Love by D'Angelo. Um, this is um, just an incredibly written song. Talking about D'Angelo's like, first real love you know and Mm -hmm. how like she has stuck with him throughout thick and thin and how like their love and bond can never be broken um it is a perfect r&b song i love how there's a lot of space for the instrumental to ride out and d'angelo just takes his time with this like he does with every single one of his tracks and that's why i like his catalog so much is because you find so many of these songs where they are so meticulously crafted and they evoke so much emotion so much passion so much love out of every single word that he sings and every single instrumental that's ever been laid down on a track i went perfect Perfect with this, I think bro. this is uh, probably the most cinematic sounding song on this list with the mm-hmm. violins, with the flamenco styled guitar. Like it's just an instrumental that keeps evolving throughout the song. Um, D'Angelo's vocal pitch, that gentle falsetto, like he like his pitch reached the moon there. I never heard him sing so high and be able to pull it off the way that he did. Um, I got nothing else to say. You said perfect. I'm on the I, same page. I, I went perfect with I'm it. I'm on the same Absolutely. page. But okay, let's keep going on with this. Let's go to No Scrubs by TLC. Um, this was a massive hit in the early 2000s, won the Grammy, um, and just, I think it's even being sampled to this day in a bunch of different it's songs. It's aged so well. And it's aged fantastic. Absolutely. Um, the No Scrubs hook is obviously iconic. I went great with this one. I think it's a great song. It became, you know, just like this sort of female empowerment album. It became a staple and sort of like... The foundation for what a lot of anthemic songs for gr- girl groups would become. Um, I mean, the concept of the song is about like them not fucking with broke boys. That's kind of what it is. Yeah. But um, and standing on business. Yeah. You know, kind of being on uh, being on your own. You know. Yeah, standing on ten toes. But um, yeah, I love the melodies. I it, it's a nice tuneful song. 
I went to great. I think great is fair. All right, let's end off this tier list with one of the best songs on this tier list, and this is You Got Me by The Roots featuring Erica Badu. Um, one of the best songs on uh, Things Fall Apart, which is uh, just an incredible, incredible album as yep. a whole. Um, I want to do more content on this album, actually, as we continue to release uh, different episodes. But how do you like this? The chemistry is fucking impeccable. Erica Badu's beautiful chorus. You have Eve that's rapping alongside Black Thought on one of the verses. Um, and just a story that felt so authentic from Black Thought's perspective, where it was really about him um, you know, being a celebrity and being... Um, in show business and having to tour the world and still try to maintain a relationship and having to have trust in a partner. Um, it's just a beautiful message, um, b- performed beautifully by all parties involved. Love the instrumental. And also, Quest Love went ham on the drums at the end. Like, just beautiful. the speed okay, that he's drumming at. Do you think at? it's a top three song on Things Fall Apart? Oof. Yeah, it, it could be. It's in the upper echelon. Upper of the echelon. It's probably upper... top five for sure. Um, I went with perfect on this one. Yeah, another perfect song. We were, we were. I don't know if we were generous, but these are critically acclaimed songs, yeah, right? Yeah, there's really nothing wrong we're with all these We're about to have perfect yeah, and amazing Yeah, you're doing tracks. a Grammys episode. You don't want to find a bunch of bads in here. You know, they definitely got things right over the years, so it's not always bad decisions with the Grammys, but we'll see what happens, man. So as the Grammys continue to grow, we'll get more of these songs and we'll continue to rank them. Yes. So guys, with that being said, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and check that pinned comment for the audio podcast episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this tier list, and we'll catch you on the next one.